I'm Anh Pham, and I'd like to tell you about my PhD research, which is a part of Project 6, led by Dr. David Sedlak in Civil and Environmental Engineering, and Dr. Fiona Doll in Material Science Engineering. In Project 6, we investigate the use of chemical oxidants, such as persulfate or hydrogen peroxide, to remove contaminants at Superfund sites uh, through a technology called in-situ chemical oxidation. So today, I would like to share with you some of our recent findings related to the use of hydrogen peroxide for in-situ chemical oxidation. But first of all, let me share with you what, how in-situ chemical oxidation works. In-situ chemical oxidation involves injection of chemical oxidant into the subsurface to oxidize organic contaminants. Uh, so the picture on this slide showed how in-situ chemical oxidation works. Oxidants such as permanganate, ozone, hydrogen peroxide, or persulfate will be injected into the subsurface through series of injection wells. And once in the subsurface, oxidant in green color will oxidize contaminants in red color and convert them in byproducts that are less toxic and more bioavailable. So compared with other technologies, in situ chemical oxidation is relatively expensive, easy to deploy, and effective against a wide range of contaminants. The disadvantage of this technology, however, is that it's very difficult to predict the performance of this technology because many chemical processes involved in this uh, technology is very, uh, are not well understood. So the mission of our research is to investigate chemical processes that take place in this technology and specifically look at the chemistry of hydrogen peroxide and persulfate so that we can understand factors controlling the efficiency as well as find ways to improve the uh, technology performance. So my research is about hydrogen peroxide in situ chemical oxidation. In this technology, hydrogen peroxide is injected into the subsurface where it will be activated into hydroxyl radical by iron minerals. Hydroxyl radical is a very powerful oxidant that can oxidize a variety of contaminants such as 1,4-dioxane, trichloroethylene, benzene, and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. So the reaction in this slide showed how hydrogen peroxide is activated into hydroxyl radical. First of all, hydrogen peroxide will reduce surface iron-3 into surface iron-2, and then surface iron-2 will react with another hydrogen peroxide molecule, and the products of this reaction is surface iron-3 and hydroxyl radical. So if you look at these reactions, you can see that for every two hydrogen peroxide molecules, we get one hydroxyl radical, which means that the efficiency of hydrogen peroxide activation into hydroxyl radical is 50%. That's not the efficiency we get in this system because hydrogen peroxide can also be decomposed by pathways that do not produce hydroxyl radical. So the blue scheme in this slide shows the hydrogen peroxide decomposition into oxygen and water without producing hydroxyl radical. So the efficiency of this system can be calculated by dividing the amount of hydrogen peroxide decomposed in, uh, into hydroxyl radical by red pathway over the total amount of hydrogen peroxide decomposed by both blue and red pathways. So the first question in our research we would like to answer is, what is the typical efficiency of hydroxyl radical production by iron minerals? Understanding the efficiency of the hydroxyl radical production will allow us to estimate the effectiveness and the cost of the treatment system. To estimate hydroxyl radical production, we set up a series of batch reactors. Each reactor contains iron minerals and hydrogen peroxide. To measure the production of hydroxyl radical, we use phenols as hydroxyl radical probe compound because uh, hydroxyl radical reacts with phenol and oxidize phenol, and the disappearance of phenol will indicate how much hydroxyl radical is being produced in this system. So we follow the phenol degradation kinetics and hydrogen peroxide decomposition rate. And from this information, we can calculate the efficiency, which is defined as the amount of phenol degraded uh, per each mole of hydrogen peroxide decomposed. And it is important to note that hydrogen peroxide activation is very sensitive to pH. So we try to control the pH as careful as possible by a series of different types of buffer. So the left figure on this slide showed the hydrogen peroxide decomposition and phenol transformation in the system catalyzed by nontronite, which is an iron-containing aluminum silicates or clay. So uh, after 40 hours of experiment, we observed that both hydrogen peroxide and phenol disappeared. And 
Hydrox theoretical efficiency can be calculated by dividing the amount of phenol disappeared per, uh, uh, over the amount of hydrogen peroxide decomposed. And the efficiency in the case of nontronite is 0.25%. The hydroxy radical efficiency can also be estimated using the same approach in the case uh, the system is catalyzed by different iron oxides, such as iron containing clays or iron coated sand or hematite, goethite. The figure on the right show the efficiency of this system when it is catalyzed by different iron minerals. The efficiency can be as high as 0.25% in the case of nontronite or in the case of our aluminum, iron, and silicon oxide catalyst, or can be as low as 0.03%, such as in the case of iron-coated sand or amorphous iron oxide. We use the same experimental design and approach to evaluate the efficiency of hydroxyl radical production when the system is catalyzed by different aquifer minerals. Aquifer minerals are a heterogeneous combination of iron oxide, iron-coated sand, and iron-containing clays. Understanding the efficiency of hydroxy radical production catalyzed by iron-containing aquifer minerals will allow us to estimate the efficiency of hydrogen peroxide-based in-situ chemical oxidation system. So we were able to test 10 samples collected from aquifers at different locations, such as Wyoming, California, Arizona, and Kentucky. And the sample were collected by our collaborators at Superfund Research Program at University of Kentucky and Arizona State University. These figures show the efficiency of hydroxy radical production when the system is catalyzed by different aquifer minerals. The efficiency can be as high as 0.2% in the case of neural sample or can be as low as 0.01% in the case of AFP material. So one thing to note about this slide is the efficiency varies across aquifer sediments, which means that the effectiveness of hydrogen peroxide-based in-situ chemical oxidation technology will vary from location to location. All of experiments in our research so far show that the efficiency of hydroxy radical production by iron minerals and aquifer minerals is very low which indicates that most hydrogen peroxide is decomposed by the blue pathway, pathway that do not produce hydroxyl radical. I have shrunk the size of the red color pathway to illustrate that only a small fraction of hydrogen peroxide is decomposed into hydroxyl radical. Or in other words, not more than 99% of hydrogen peroxide will be decomposed by a wasteful pathway. We are currently looking at the factors that control the branching between the red and the blue pathways and one of our recent findings was that if iron exists on the surface as iron oxide or cluster of iron, then the hydrogen peroxide will be decomposed by blue pathway. On the other hand, if iron is associated with the structure of the minerals, such as in the case of nontronite, then hydrogen peroxide will tend to decompose by red pathway, the pathway that produces hydroxy radical. So to test this hypothesis, we use the citrate bicarbonate dithionite method to extract or to remove iron oxide on the surface of the aquifer minerals. This citrate bicarbonate dithionite method is being used by solid scientists to remove surface iron and iron cluster, but not the structural iron. What I'm showing in this figure is the efficiency with the original and modified or the CBD extracted aquifer minerals. And we observe that the CBD extraction method enhances the hydroxy radical production by over 10 times, which means that if you can find a way to remove iron oxide on the surface of aquifer minerals, you can enhance the efficiency of the hydrogen peroxide-based in-situ chemical oxidation. From the beginning till now, I've told you about the efficiency of hydrogen peroxide-based in-situ chemical oxidation. But another aspect of this research is to look at the kinetics of this process, because kinetics of this process will allow us to estimate how, how long will it take to remove contaminants and how long will hydrogen peroxide last in the subsurface. One major challenge of the technology is that hydrogen peroxide is unstable and will be decomposed quickly in the subsurface. Consequently, an excess amount of hydrogen peroxide needs to be injected into the subsurface, and the injection wells has to be located immediately proximate to the contaminated site, which results in technical challenges and higher cost of remediation system. One of our recent findings was that we discovered that 
dissolved silica can slow down hydrogen peroxide decomposition because dissolved silica can deposit on the surface of iron oxide and inhibit uh, iron oxide cat catalytic activity. What I'm showing in this slide is the rate of hydrogen peroxide decomposition by goethite in the presence of different amount of dissolved silica. We observe that in the presence of 0.5 millimoles of dissolved silica, the rate of hydrogen peroxide decomposition slows by almost 80%. We also observe that the rate of hydrogen peroxide decomposition is inversely correlated to the amount of dissolved silica in the system. We study the surface of goethite by the scanning transmission electron microscope coupled with the energy dispersive X-ray to look at the surface. The figure on the right shows the scanning TEM EDX data, which show the silica peak on the surface of goethite. Uh, so we, by coupling the scanning TEM EDX data and the kinetic study, we were able to prove that the slower hydrogen peroxide decomposition in the presence of silica was due to the deposition of silica on the surface, and this deposition inhibit uh, reactive site and decrease hydrogen peroxide decomposition. We also look at the effect of dissolved silica toward hydrogen peroxide decomposition in the case of other minerals. In this figure, the presence of 0.5 millimole of dissolved silica increased half-life hydrogen peroxide by over 80%. The same effect was also observed uh, in the case of aquifer minerals. The presence of 2 millimoles of dissolved silica increased the half-life of hydrogen peroxide by over 80%. Our data have important implications toward the design and operation of hydrogen peroxide-based in-situ chemical oxidation. First of all, by measuring concentration of dissolved silica in groundwater, we will be able to better predict half-life of hydrogen peroxide and uh, how far hydrogen peroxide will travel upon leaving the injection well. In addition, in the case where there is no dissolved silica in the subsurface, Silica can be injected together with hydrogen peroxide to enhance the lifetime of hydrogen peroxide. Silica is inexpensive and benign to the environment and potentially can replace other stabilizing reagents such as phosphate or citrate. Let me summarize what I've told you so far. I've told you about hydrogen peroxide-based in-situ chemical oxidation and how hydrogen peroxide can be activated into hydroxyl radical by iron minerals. And hydroxyl radical is a powerful oxidant and can oxidize a variety of contaminants. The efficiency of this system is low, but we can improve the efficiency by understanding the mechanism of this process. For example, we've learned that iron oxide on the surface of aquifer is very ineffective toward hydrogen peroxide activation. Removing iron oxide can enhance the efficiency of this system. Another finding in our research was that by injecting dissolved silica into the subsurface, we can enhance the lifetime of hydrogen peroxide and improve the efficiency of technology. So I would like to conclude my presentation today by showing you this slide. On this slide, I have the estimated number of contaminated sites as well as estimated projected cost for the treatment. There are 300,000 contaminated sites that need to be cleaned up. It is estimated that more than $200 billion need to be invested. These numbers means that for every 1% of improvement in efficiency, we can save about $2 billion. And for that reason, I find that this research is very intellectual challenging, but at the same time, we can make a huge contribution to the Superfund Research Program, as well as to the mission uh, of protecting the environment. Thank you.